All living cells must excrete the waste products of metabolism. Cells would die if some of these waste products were allowed to accumulate. Various means of excreting waste products have evolved. In unicellular organisms, such as paramecium, the excess carbon dioxide and ammonia diffuse out of the cell. Ammonia is highly toxic, but animals living in water can then dilute the ammonia easily and quickly. Excess water, which accumulates in the paramecium, passes from the side by way of radiating canals. When the vacuole is filled, it expels the water to the outside. Energy is expended in the process. In some multicellular animals, carbon dioxide and ammonia diffuse out of the cells. This is possible because their cells are in constant contact with the external medium. Planarians also are surrounded by water and excrete carbon dioxide and ammonia by diffusion. However, a planarian does have an excretory system which consists of a series of branching tubes. The outer ends of these branching tubes open to the outside. The inner ends terminate in flame cells. Each flame cell contains a space which connects with an excretory duct. A tuft of cilia projects into the space, and the beating of the cilia creates a current which forces water through the branching tubes to the outside. The beating of cilia in flame cells can also be seen in the rotifer. Flame cells remove water from spaces around the cells. In the earthworm, the circulatory system is the chief route for the removal of carbon dioxide. Blood circulating in capillaries close to the exterior of the skin receives oxygen and gives up carbon dioxide. The earthworm also has excretory tubes, which can be seen when the overlying organs are removed. There are two excretory tubes, or nephridia, for nearly every segment of the body. The funnel, or inner end, of each tube is in the body cavity. The body cavity contains salamic fluid into which metabolic wastes diffuse from the cells. Moving cilia, which encircle each funnel, propel some of the waste products into the excretory tubes. Capillaries form a network around the tubes, which pick up some waste materials directly from the blood. Cilia in the tubes beat and the muscular walls contract, forcing the fluid waste through openings or nephridiopores to the outside of the body. Ammonia and urea are the chief nitrogenous wastes that are excreted through the nephridiopore.
annelids have two nephridia for nearly every segment. The excretory organs of insects are localized in one area. One end of the excretory organs, or malpighian tubules, floats freely in the large cavities, where the blood brings metabolic wastes, except carbon dioxide, from all cells. The other end opens into the digestive canal. The tubules extract wastes from the blood and pass them into the digestive canal. Uric acid, which needs very little water to carry it away, has evolved as the major nitrogenous waste product of insects. The uric acid, in crystalline form, passes out with the undigested food particles. The grasshopper removes carbon dioxide, one of the major metabolic wastes, by the tracheal tubes which branch repeatedly to reach all parts of the body. The excretory system of a crayfish, a crustacean, consists chiefly of two large green glands, which remove nitrogenous wastes from the blood. These wastes pass through ducts and are discharged through two excretory pores. The principal excretory organs in all vertebrates are two kidneys, which in the frog lie on either side of the spine. The bladder temporarily stores some of the urine. In amphibians, urine flows from the kidneys through the ureters to the cloaca. Some of the urine may be forced into the bladder where it is stored until eliminated. Mammals also have two kidneys, one on each side of the spine. In most mammals, the ureters connect directly to a bladder. A single duct, the urethra, connects to the bladder and discharges to the exterior. The two kidneys of mammals remove wastes from the bloodstream and excrete them as liquid urine. Blood with wastes is brought to each kidney in the renal artery and leaves through the renal vein. The urine leaves the kidney through the ureter. About one-fourth of the blood flowing in the dorsal aorta enters the two kidneys. The blood leaves the kidneys through the renal veins, which empty into the inferior vena cava. After the renal artery enters the kidney, it breaks into many smaller branches, which run through the inner portion of the kidney into the outer layer, or cortex. The cortex contains about a million microscopic tubes, 
the nephrons. The nephrons, which remove urea, salts, and other waste materials from the blood, play a major role in maintaining the composition of body fluids. At one end, the wall of the tubule is expanded and folded into a chamber, Bowman's capsule. The other end opens into a duct or tubule that collects urine. A capillary network is in close proximity with each nephron. Within the Bowman's capsule is a tuft of capillaries the glomerulus. The close contact between the blood vessels and the nephron permits rapid exchange of materials. The blood flowing through the glomerulus is under pressure from the pumping of the heart. This pressure causes water and dissolved materials to filter into the capsules. The water and dissolved materials move through the tubule. Useful materials, such as glucose, are reabsorbed from the tubule into the capillary network. Glucose and other materials are reabsorbed against the diffusion gradient. They move from an area of low concentration to one of high concentration. This is active transport and requires a great expenditure of energy. Some materials are secreted from the blood into the tubule. This movement also involves active transport. Active transport can be demonstrated with living tubules of a goldfish in a solution containing the dye phenol red. The dye moves into the lumen of the tubule even though the concentration of dye in the lumen is much greater than in the surrounding solution. Urea and other waste materials in the tubules move to collecting ducts. These discharge into a central cavity that connects with the ureter. The urine passes through the ureter to the bladder where it is stored. Eventually, the urine is expelled to the outside through the urethra. Thus, living organisms have various ways of excreting metabolic waste products. Unicellular organisms excrete toxic ammonia and other waste directly into the external environment. Most multicellular organisms have excretory systems which transfer uric acid, urea, and other wastes to the exterior. <laughs>